Hey there guys, welcome back, Ricky here. So the next question here is from Coldplay's Z. That's a cool one. Cold, no, I'm sorry, not cold. Cold plays. Oh, cold plays. Okay, that's what it is. Okay. So nice video, Ricky. Thank you very much. I'm guessing that's from the sharpening, best sharpening whetstone. Um, kids will do that. Laughing out loud. Love them. Uh, not as much time for hobby, but wouldn't have it any other way. All right. Loves video. Thank you very much again. I bought a whetstone brand to start trying to learn. Maybe I should have bought a better stone. Uh, my thinking was I work on technique with cheap knife and cheap stone But now I'm wondering whether I should have gotten a better stone and still use the cheap knives to learn What are your thoughts on this question? Okay, so cool plays My honest opinion is use what you have so since you have since you have already bought a cheap stone keep using it and hone your skills and that's really it I mean the you know the biggest um, the biggest pit that we uh, knife enthusiasts fall into is going out and buying the best knife and the best stones we can at the very beginning. Not even knowing if you are going to stick with knife sharpening or hand sharpening in three to six months. So my advice to people is always use the, you know, the tools that you have and uh, spend as little as you can to get the job done and to learn. So in the, begin in the very beginning, which is where you are now, yeah, hone your skills. Don't worry about it. You will get better and you will be able to have a much more better sense of what you want later on. Uh, the biggest, I think the two biggest things with uh, more expensive quality stones is that they give you better feedback and that they are much slower to wear. And so, uh, and, and that's kind of a generalization by the way, but I'm just saying in general. So the feedback is going to help you feel the stone and feel the knife, what the, what the knife is doing on the stone much better. So you will benefit with a more quality stone if you are able to maintain a very consistent edge from tip to heel of a knife so you know if you can if you can practice on your cheap budget stone and get a really nice clean edge from tip to heel on any knife whether it's a expensive knife or a budget knife and not have any scratches on the profile of the knife after a number of sharpenings then you know that you have a very stable hand and there's nothing wrong with using cheap knives for that i mean that is what i would prefer and what i recommend people so you know just use what you have don't worry about going out and buying a pricier stone right now and once you have sharpened your knives to the point where you are very comfortable and when I say comfortable it's like you will know because you will pick up a knife and you will not have any fear of scratching the profile of that knife whether it's a $10 knife or a $100 knife. Once you have established that level of confidence then I say go out and go buy a Chorsera or a Shepton Glass you know or whatever it is that you are looking to buy um, so yeah, so don't worry about that. You'll get there and honestly, you can get there really quickly. It may only take a couple dozen sharpenings or a dozen sharpenings at that point, but you will get there. You will establish that level of confidence and uh, you will have by then saved up enough money to buy whatever stone you want. Just use what you have and uh, don't worry about more expensive stones until later on. Okay, so we have a question here from what's that, Flynn uh, Film Film Factory. Film Factory. Are you a filmmaker? Film Factory. Are you popping out films like a factory? Okay, uh, <laughs> that wasn't a joke. Sort of bad joke. Sorry. Okay, so uh, the question is: I have a Ken Onion Shun Chef's knife. Good for you. Um, any tips on the care for the wood handle? Okay, well. Um, I don't know that knife, but I'm going to give you a kind of a, uh, I'll, let me grab something really quickly here and I'll show you guys how I actually season my wooden knives or my wooden handles on my knives. Okay. So I've got three things here. Let me show you what they are. Um, this here, this jar is actually a beeswax mineral oil mixture. It's actually nine parts, no, no it's 50% mineral oil and 50% beeswax. So let me show you what it does. It leaves. Okay, so the wax from this thing is actually fairly hard. You can see right here that it's actually, it's it feels a lot more like a wax. Okay, so definitely very dense and it's softening up because it's on my fingers right now. Feels exactly how I described it. It's like a wax. It's kind of hard and kind of dense. Um, it's a little bit softer than candle wax, but definitely very hard. And so I was using this because I was trying to make a um, wax for my wooden handles and for my cutting boards. And so the 55th mixture is really too hard for most cases. It doesn't really absorb into the wood very well. It does leave a film on your handle. So I don't recommend going a 50-50 route, but I did try this for a little while and it works a lot better with um, screws, like actually putting this on threads of screws because it keeps the screws very tight and also keeps it from rusting. 
but it's good for that. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we have here is a uh, it's a nine to ten ratio of nine parts mineral oil and one part beeswax, multi beeswax, and this is much more like a paste, really nice fine paste, and it actually is um, it's solid right now, but if you touch it and I, you actually if I touch it, it's it's like it's again it's a very very soft wax like a paste and it, this works really well because it actually absorbs into the wood it gives the oil some d penetration into the wood but the wax also also seals the the oil fairly well um, but it adds a really nice sheen to your to your wooden handle without leaving any sort of waxy uh film on the handle and so i really recommend this if you want something cheap you can make your own again just melt nine parts uh well you melt beeswax and uh and heat up your oil so um, just mix nine parts mineral oil and one part beeswax and you just mix it all together in a double boiler in, the, in a glass boiler and it comes up really nice. I make these and um, I make these for all of, all my knives and, and my cutting boards. When I want something that is actually more waterproof and watertight, so this is actually what I've made. This here is a three parts, mm, three parts, uh, let's see if I can remember this correctly. So this is a three, it's a three part mixture. There are three ingredients in here and it's one part linseed oil, one part mineral oil uh, or mineral spirits, and then one part varnish. And so you can use any varnish you want. I use General's uh, varnish, which is actually pretty decent. And it's a salad bowl varnish, which I will leave in the video description if you guys want to see the exact item um, that I'm talking about. But I mix, these are, it's equal parts of all three ingredients and you simply mix it. And so this here actually leaves a pretty much a watertight seal on your handle or on your cutting board if you apply more than three layers of it. So the way this absorbs, this absorbs actually really fast into the wood grain, by the way. So you simply dip a rag into this and you put it onto the surface of your surface of your knife or your cutting board. It absorbs and will dry probably within three to four hours. And you can leave it overnight if you want to. And then the next day, I should go back out and I will sand the surface just a little bit to lift up some of the grain, and then I will reapply this. Um, after three applications, you have a really, really thin film, and I would stop there. Uh, it actually leaves a nice dark hue on your on your handle, um, but also if you go beyond three layers or three applications of it, the film gets a little too thick and it feels more like plastic and full, as opposed to like uh, you being able to feel the wooden grain of the handle. So this actually will give you the best waterproofing of your handle. Uh, if you want to feel the the most natural grain on your on your handle, then I would say apply only one layer of this if you want to use this mixture here. Or the best solution that I would recommend is going with the nine to ten or nine to one oil beeswax mixture. This will give you the best tactile feel on the handle while providing just adequate water water. I wouldn't call it waterproofing, but water resistance on your handle. Uh, this would be, need to be applied every month or month and a half or so. Uh, this here, once you've applied one layer, it definitely will last you probably for a year. And I have a big butcher block that I will bring at some point, uh, I'll show you guys. I actually applied this throughout the entire block and it kept it pretty much watertight for about three to three years or so. And around the fourth year, it started cracking. So, but that has more to do with the wood actually uh, drying and warping as opposed to this not working anymore. Um, so that's my answer to you, uh, Film Factory. If you want something that's more watertight, go with a mixture like what I have here. I will leave the ingredients in the description. And then if you want something that's more, gives you better feedback and better tactile feel of the wooden handle, go with a mineral oil and beeswax mixture. Okay? If you like this format, please give the video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you appreciate it. Um, if you want your questions answered in this video or one of these videos here, just leave a question uh, in the comment section with the word question either in the front or at the end of the comment. You see exactly how I search for these comments. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy my content. And for those who want to be updated on all the new videos, please enable notifications. I have new videos coming out every single week. And for those who are curious what my latest recommendations for knives, whetstones, and sharpening accessories are, I will leave a link in the video description to my kit list. And in that kit list, you will see all of the knives that I use, recommend, and everything that I use here in my studio. You will also see a link to my e-store where you can pick up handmade straps that are made by yours truly. Alright, well thank you so much for being here, I'll catch you in the next video.